By experience, Maddie knows that good shark bait should be oily and bloody. He has a preference for eel that he regularly fishes out of the Sulu River near Aqua, a small paradise of a spot especially appreciated among the Maorians. Maddie uses an ancient technique to chase shark, which his father taught him. In his youth, they checked lines and hooked bait alongside one another. A raft with oars and basic equipment is all one needs in order to fish in the lagoon. Maddie regularly poses his lines alone. In place of an anchor, he uses a big rock that he throws overboard. He catches mainly white-spotted sharks from the reef and occasionally a tiger shark, but they are rare. Like many Maorians, Madi is very religious. Here, 99% of the population is Muslim. There isn't a village that doesn't have a mosque or a city where minarets don't dominate the roofs and the terraces. Madi faithfully attends the important prayer session on Fridays, a holy day where everyone dresses in his best clothing with a braided bonnet called a kofia. After the ritual ablutions, he prays in front of the imam with his face turned towards Mecca. The petrol lamp that accompanies Madi is used to attract fish. Like a lot of men in the village, he fishes at night using the palangraft method, a local technique. Mackerel constitute the basis of this self-sufficient fishing that allows him to feed his wife and his 14 children. Maddy has set up a campground on the Emsamburo Islet to the northwest of the coast. He'll stay there for a week, enough time to hunt shark and other kinds of fish, and then he'll bring them back to the village. Everything that is not eaten will either be sold or traded on the market.
In the morning, he pulls up the lines that he cast the previous day. In general, he catches only white-spotted sharks no larger than two meters. Most often, he's content just to pull them, already dead, on board. The shark's respiratory system can only function when it is in motion. Once immobilized, it quickly dies of asphyxiation. An uncontested god, the shark remains the king of the abyssal zone. They've existed for almost 350 million years. In the year 492 BC, Herodotus told us of the first shark attack. Though Jonah was technically eaten by a giant whale, it might well have been a shark. Since the beginning of time, men have sought to protect themselves against the jaws of death. Hawaiians tattoo their ankles and pray to the gods to send them good sharks to chase away the bad ones. And the natives of the Solomon Islands worship sharks through sacrifices. After cutting up the sharks, Maddie dries the pieces in the sun. It is a well-known and very effective conservation method among Mahorians. It keeps the meat from rotting. At night, fishermen from neighboring villages visit one another. Maddy tells his friend about the day he caught the largest shark of his life, a seven-meter-long monster. That day, he was required to seek help in the village. Many fishermen came out with a big motor raft. The enormous shark fought fiercely, but they were finally able to get it on board. It was so heavy that they had to be towed into the village. The Indian Ocean waters are rich in flora and tropical underwater fauna. From the tiny clownfish to the imposing marine turtle, the diversity of forms and colors is vast. That's why it's not strange to find an unexpected catch at the end of a line, such as a leopard ray. Everything is either edible or saleable. Maddy works several hours a day to make his living through fishing. Even so, he earns only a modest salary. Yet he is one of the rare fishermen with only one job. For a long time, he was a tailor, but he had to stop because he didn't earn enough money. 
the large majority of Maorian fishermen have to work two jobs in order to live decently.